Union, nor sand, nor centuries could ever entirely silence the voice of the desert. Alexander, Caesar, and Napoleon paused at my feet. I saw the ambitious dreams of conquerors whirling like dead leaves. As my motto, I chose an Arab saying, The world fears time, but time fears the pyramid. Of all ancient monuments, it is the pyramids which have always appealed most vividly to man's imagination. Considered from its top downwards, the pyramid is like the sun's rays bursting through a gap in the clouds. It commemorates the greatest victory of all, victory over death. It is the most perfect mansion, the strongest tent, whose great stone sides are both roof and wall, and so carefully sealed that the dream entrusted to it can live to the end of the world. Of immortality. To achieve this, embalmers prepared the body for two months, emptying it of all but its heart and kidneys. by a whole crowd of statues, provided with all that was necessary for the journey. There, in the sarcophagus, lay the mummy, to be called on by the soul. For alone and without the body, the soul could not go into the night. And from the depths of this tomb still rises the scent of herbs, cedar oil, resin, and myrrh. But a pyramid is also the perfect combination of simplicity and magnitude. And the interplay of the angle makes the less harmony and shaping following. It is architecture's purest achievement, because it will arrive on a straight line alone. Never has a straight line been drawn to the arms of its skill and strength. How much, I say, to immortate the learning? who was a car and seed and was the unhappy type of Made up of six and others, it rose gradually in a broken line of steps. The idea had been born. Calculations had begun. The perfect form was there. Among all the objects laid by a dead man's side in his tomb, a surprise palace is undoubtedly the most precious. From it, it would draw upon hieroglyphs representing the figures which made possible the fabulous calculations ordering the mountain to stone. A lotus flower from thousands, a finger worth a tenfold, a tattoo for a hundred and a thousand, and a surprise two hands joining in prayer. Stone by stone, it was built from earth to heaven.
estimated in a mighty surge of faith. Each stone averaged two and a half tons in weight. Three million rocks were hoisted up and laid one on the other. The finest ones of pure granite were dug up in the quarries of Aswan, whence they came by boat, carried by the flooding of the Nile. The movement of these great waters drove the farmers from their inundated fields to the plateau of Gizeh, where they joined the army of laborers and built. These stones were hauled singly on earth mounds backed higher and higher as the edifice grew. In front of such superhuman effort, can one believe in the legend of the whip? It needs mystical fervor to build a pyramid. Faith. Those who work here deserve not our pity, but our deepest respect and admiration. They live through one of those rare times when man knows with absolute certainty what he has to do and where to go because he believes. Here man thought that death was vanquished. Sand was beginning to choke. 
get it by water of Mesopotamia. On the head of the second was far away from his land. Then one day, while hunting the lion, a prince stopped to rest in your shadow. He fell asleep. You gave him a dream and spoke to him. Responding to the excitement of the crowd, they increased their 